Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, it looks like PlayStation might be trying to go and scam all of us and mislead us a little bit when it comes to their upcoming PlayStation 5 Pro console. Now, I'm going to go and admit this quite up right off the bat, so I don't waste most of your time. That is a little bit of a clickbait in terms of, like, scamming, but if you guys can hear me on out, I would love to hear your thoughts and comments on this. The big premise of this video right now, and I've kind of actually been seeing a lot of community talk about this, some tweets about it, Reddit posts about this, and everything else, is on the fact that right now, the PlayStation 5 Pro is a purely digital console and i'm sure you guys have heard a lot of the controversy back and forth where it's annoying that we have to go and spend another 80 dollars or maybe even more depending on your region to have an attachable disk drive and we've kind of been seeing some other posts where basically a lot of games might be going digital we don't necessarily need to have the attachable disk drive and in most of these major points i myself have been saying no i like my playstation 5 physical edition i like the fact of having physical games i like collecting games and having something in my own hands and i think most people agree, although I do have a little bit of skepticism on my opinion on that, which is totally fine. You don't always have to agree with me. But right now, it seems like more people than expected are actually disc buyers. More people actually have physical disc editions, and it seems like right now a lot more people are calling out the fact that we don't have a pure disc edition PSI Pro that's able to be bought and sold rather than us having to have the weird attachment drive to make it go and happen. It's kind of a hard thing to explain, but if you guys let me kind of cook, hopefully you guys will be cooking with me as we go and discuss this topic. And of course, for this one, I really like want to hear your thoughts and comments and everything down below. I do always kind of push the idea of like game preservation, as I mentioned, and physical copies. So I want to hear if you guys agree on that or disagree on that. And of course, as I kind of explain myself, we'd love to hear all the comments down below. So make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on as well. I'm trying to get to the 69,000 subscriber mark so thank you guys all for the brand new subscribers and subscribe for a ps5 pro giveaway going on over here we have all the second youtube channel the two twitter accounts and twitch down below for bonus giveaway entries so click on that those down link down below and of course as well if you guys want to pick up the disk drive or ps5 pro yourself use the links down below although it's kind of ballsy for me to go and put affiliate links on a video where i'm calling it a scam but as you guys probably know i do have my ps5 pro still pre-ordered so i'm not a hater but this is a intriguing concept nonetheless so first and foremost we've been seeing this article that came out over here from insider gaming talk about the fact that as of right this second the disc edition makes up 82 percent of all of the playstation 5 console sales and this also as we'll get to also like the fact that a lot of people are mentioning that they themselves prefer physical game copies and they prefer especially for big triple a games God of War, Spider-Man, Horizons, all of those to typically have a physical edition. And I myself am a part of that same bundle. We'll get to that as the part two of the video. So I do also want to highlight as well a lot of like caveats for this video too to pre-explain it. I do want to say at the early stages of the PS5 restocking era, the disc edition was mostly in stock. They made more PlayStation 5 disc editions, most likely because they have an upcharge for it. It was the more expensive console. And of course, the disc drives probably don't cost $100 to go and make. So they're probably making a better and bigger profit. And as well, typically for physical media, you can kind of upcharge a bit longer. Typically due to like Steam and EA and just online sales, typically digital downloads do go on sale quicker. Think like Steam summer sales. I'm sure you guys have heard those those memes around or even the playstation digital sales well in in store stuff typically will keep their price a little bit higher for a longer period of time so those are two things to note but that also once again kind of supports the point i don't want to make that as a negative where it's like well people buy the disc edition because it's available but i do want to go and say people have the disc edition so they sometimes don't mind utilizing the disc edition so kind of like the counterpoint for that is if you have 82 percent of all playstations with like disc editions mine's a disc edition that kind of opens up the window that more people are okay with buying physical editions because at the end of the day that means they have the hardware to utilize it so while we are kind of getting rid of this disc edition for the ps5 pro which i still think is stupid i think it for a 700 console it should be included and that's kind of been the big overall like vibe of it for the past few weeks as we've known about the ps5 pro so i'm with that but anyway let me kind of dive on it i think you guys got the gist of what i'm trying to say hopefully the disc editions of the ps5 are make up a majority of its console sales in the united states according to the latest data from circana 82 percent of the lifetime sales of the ps5 are those with a disc drive that puts digital only consoles at just 18 percent of the total sales which may get scoot up a bit more because the ps5 is technically a digital only console and this is where the scam comes in i'm going to use scam lightly because i just think it's better clickbait i'm sure you guys don't mind hopefully fingers crossed let me know but the idea behind is that they are kind of misleading us on the information we've seen many multiple reports stating that majority of games are through digital downloads would well, that make sense though we've definitely moved more towards a digital age but now with the more kind of outgoing information over here 
here, we're seeing, and this might or may not be true based on some community posts, that including things like indie games that are included as a digital download makes up the percentages way higher. And a lot more people that have these, like I mentioned, big AAA games would prefer a physical edition if they can. So this, these numbers actually might be a little bit skewed and it might be a little bit like, I guess, doctored for us to be like, oh, it's okay to have to spend $80 on an attachable disk drive, which I still think is stupid in my honest opinion. It's okay. Most games are digital, which I do agree. Like the every year there will be a higher percentage of digital games, but I still think there's a very large majority of people who like the physical edition higher than the numbers are saying, because some of these might be skewed as well. And of course, sometimes say for a PS5 Pro, you might be forced to. So it's almost like in like forcing us to have to go and be on a digital only world. Sony has made a push in recent years for players to move to a more digital only version of its system, aka the PS5 Pro. Not only does the company charge less for the digital only PS5, which makes sense, but the new PS5 Pro only comes in a digital version. In order to play discs, you have to buy a disc drive separately, adding more to your cost. There's another $80, which makes your console $800, which is a lot. That said, it appears that so far, players are okay with spending a little extra for the op option to play physical media on their console, myself included. I am one of those people, and that was an active choice because I could have got a PS5 digital when it first came out. out. And while a digital-only future seems likely for games, it doesn't look like gamers are ready to fully go that route as of yet. And I'm with that, dude. I don't mind physical media. I will always push this. I don't mind. I like the option of it. But I also like the idea, like, I don't mind spending the extra 50 bucks. 80 bucks gets a little high, though, and at the end of the day. So for what it's worth, September 2024 saw digital PS5 sales make up 40% of new sales for the month. And it might go up a little bit higher, too, with the PS5 Pro, because it's technically a digital-only console. On the Xbox side of things, the Xbox Series X just surpassed the Xbox Series S in terms of total unit sales, which is also surprising. But once again, that kind of goes to show that people want the power and also don't mind having the disc attachments. As of September 2024, the Series X has a slim 51 majority over the cheaper Series S in the United States. What do you think about the PS5 sales being mostly consoles with disk drives? Let us know down below. That's kind of like the article for it. So the premise of this is intriguing, where it shows that most people have disk drive consoles or want it. We even saw the disk drive sell out on Amazon when it first got released. And we even kind of go through like some of the Reddit threads over here. And this is where things get kind of interesting. This is where like the scam, exaggeration, or whatever it might be when it comes to PlayStation might come on out. Saying, I will always buy disk-based consoles as long as they're available with 2.3 thousand upvotes in only eight hours. And I'm that same boat. And I do think there's been a big, like, stigma and things being pushed on out that we are purely digital. And, like, it only matters for digital. Which I, once again, understand. That is ramping up and up and up. But it's also almost forced at our hands. Walmart and Best Buy and Target are just getting rid of all their stock. Things, like I said, you get cheaper Steam sales. Makes sense. And, of course, sometimes want the ease. Like, I will digitally download some games, but some physically I want to have. They're saying digital sales are, like, 70% of all games. But I think the fact that most indie and games under $30 are digital only gets overlooked, and I do agree on that. My digital collection is like 15% AAA games, 85% indies. I'm getting most third-party games, though, on a disc. And they're saying we saw during the Insomniac leak and just how even a few years ago, the PS5 physical was still selling more than digital for AAA games, and I would agree. Like, there was a lot of times, even back then, people want collector's editions. We have all these disc users, as I just mentioned, 82% of people with a disc console. Like, people want to utilize the disc, whether it's for, like, a game fly, like, sharing games with their friends, buying used, buying things from GameStop, etc. Some of these numbers are actually not being fully factored on in. And as well, obviously, the numbers will go down over time. More people are used to digital, but it's also the ease of access. If there's a lot more games that are out there that are available only for digital, think the PS5 Pro, you are forced and locked into it, and it kind of skews the numbers. And also, they're even saying things like microtransactions might count as digital game sales, too. So once again, that might be like a Call of Duty, a Fortnite, Rocket League, Game Pass things, whatever it might be, that also might be factored into a microtransaction for these digital game sales, both on PlayStation and Xbox. And I think that's a big deal, too. Like, $15 games, and I agree, some games like Beltoro, like one of my good buddies, Poacher, loves that game, plays that game. But it's not a big AAA game. And while that is factored into, say, like, the Switch or PlayStation or all of that, one big thing to go and note is that 
it does skew the numbers a decent amount. And it may actually go and show that there are more physical users available. And they're also kind of saying like, hey man, there's no real reason. Like they're all multifaceted stuff like that too as well. But I do agree, there should always be the option. Like the fact that the PS5 Pro is potentially getting rid of this fully, and maybe the PS6 getting rid of it fully, all that type of stuff is a big deal. Because once again, we might be getting like scammed and screwed when it comes to them. They might be forcing the digital only vibe on us. And I don't mind, like I am, like I said, I will buy games on the digital side. But at the same time, too, as well, it's not really sure what they want to have at the end goal be all. Once again, I, I realize I do like the idea of this flexibility, even though I mentioned over here. Like, if you have a game, you beat it within a week, which I do sometimes do as a streamer. You can sell it on an eBay and just get rid of it. Give it to a friend, put it to GameStop, whatever. And I do think that's a fact, like, this is almost like a culture for gaming as a whole. So I do kind of think that the PlayStation is kind of scamming us a little bit on this PS5 Pro. I do think that they're skewing the numbers, and I do wish that we'd have more of a physical-based console and I hope that the PS6 will be more like the PS5 where there's options or same with the Xbox Series X and S because I like the idea of physical media and I do think it's a little bit weird that well with how many consoles that we have for the PS5 Disc Edition and how little we have for the physical media collector's editions as a whole. So give me your thoughts and comments on this thesis, thoughts, or whatever. Subscribe if you guys are new. Subscribe for the PS5 Pro giveaway, the 69,000 sub gold dream, and all the extra links down below for the bonus giveaway links and the affiliate links too. And I appreciate you all so much for watching here in the first place.